Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing really well and staying safe out there. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week on YouTube showing you how I edit my photos using different software products. Today I am in Luminar 4 and there's two tools that I use um, verbally. I use them somewhat interchangeably, uh, but I've come to realize the more I spend time with them that they're really not the same thing, that they do different things. And I wanted to talk about that and those two tools the first one is AI Structure, which is great and I love and I use all the time. And the second one is Details Enhancer, which is great and I love and I'm starting to use more of the time. So um, historically, I've kind of said, well, I'm going to give this little AI structure to bump up those details, get a little crispier photo. Um, and I don't know if that's actually the right description. So I, you know, as I've dove, div, dove, dived, whatever, as I've used these tools, how do you say dove, dive? Anyway. I continue to use these tools, and as I experiment more with them and more and more, um, I realize that they're kind of doing different things, even though they're very uh, similar. And is there overlap? Absolutely. Um, but I've typically used the term somewhat interchangeably, as I said, and I don't really think that's the case. So what I wanted to do is walk through a couple of examples, showing you AI structure, and then showing you details and answer on the same photo, so you can draw your own conclusions. And I thought I would talk a little bit about that as we're doing it. So. I've got a photo here and I'm gonna zoom in. These are some rocks. Um, as you can tell, I'm gonna zoom in even more. Uh, now, here's the thing. I shot this at f1.4, really wide open, so um, everything's not gonna be in focus, which is comes into play with detail enhancement specifically. Um, but I wanna point out a couple of the differences. So I'm gonna start with AI structure. Now, the way I think about AI structure, uh, the way I've come to think about it is it's more broad and more global in nature. Um, and it creates more perceived detail versus Details Enhancer, which really does enhance the natural detail there and help you kind of crisp that up a little bit. AI Structure talks about in, you know, improving image detail and clarity, adding drama and things like that. And in fact, you can do all of that and it works really well. And in fact, I would argue that's some of the best things that it's good for. So let me start, I'm just gonna go to 100 just because, but that's AI Structure at 100, right? And then of course you have the boost slider down below. And as you crank that up, you can see that that perceived detail is really starting to pop. That's one way that people use AI structure uh, to create sort of an HDR dramatic look. You can do that with AI structure, I think, better than you can with the details enhancer slider. But um, let me show you. So there it is um, with the AI, instru AI structure all the way to 100. And there it is at zero. So the only thing I've done part of this uh, video is I bumped up the exposure because the photo was a little bit dark. So I'm gonna leave it for both tool demonstrations with a little bit brighter, uh, that exposure bump. But anyway, here one more time is AI structure and there it is without. So let me go to details enhancer. Now you've got three different sections here. And as the name implies, there's small, medium, and large details. And you know, I, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an image uh, expert or whatever the word is, but I think of small, medium, and large details being present in every image, and depending on the image and the part of the image, the incidence of them is going to be higher or lower. So uh, small details to me are the ones that are really fine and crispy. So as I start to do this, you can see that really gives a perceived sharpness to the photo as well. It gets really kind of crunchy looking there, um, and it's probably picking up a tiny bit of noise uh, in the sky. Medium, and, and so I think of those small details as being the fine things, like these little things. If it's a face uh, picture, like a portrait, I think of it as it being like the pores of the skin or the eyelashes, things like that. Medium details, you're gonna get a little bit out of this photo. And then the large details, I think of as being more the global contours uh, in the image. And so there's, there's some of that. Now, let me turn this off. There it is before, and there it is after. Now, keep that in mind. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna go back to AI structure. And there you go. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but another thing that AI structure does, I've come to realize this, it does play with the contrast. It changes the light value a little bit. Let me back out and show you this uh, large full screen. There it is before AI, oh, excuse me, with AI structure, and there it is without. You notice how the light's changing? It's almost like the sky's getting polarized a little bit. Look at that, and the light in the foreground is changing, the light on the rock is changing, uh, the, the big rock that this pile of rocks is sitting on. But the entire contrast and the light distribution, which really is a, a big part of contrast, that is all being changed as I use AI structure one more time, before AI structure and after. So that's something else to keep in mind is that it is playing with the contrast in your image, which um, 
can have a huge impact on the perceived detail and the overall look of the image as well. Now, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna to go to a details enhancer and turn that back on. I have not reset the tool. When I reset or turn that back on, I get the crispiness in the rock and some of the foreground rock, but everything else stays about the same. Notice the light didn't change. So keep that in mind. I think that's a big differentiator is that the AI structure is playing a bit with the contrast. So there you go, without detail enhancer and with it, right? With, without, with, without. No light changes. Back to AI structure, there's without, there's with. It's a massive difference in the look of the photo. So keep that in mind as you're using AI structure, that you're impacting more than just like the perceived detail or the clarity in the image. You're also impacting the light distribution by, uh, by changing contrast slightly. Now again, I've got it at 100, so this is a bit of an extreme example, and I don't necessarily recommend that you go to 100 every time, but it's something to keep in mind as you do amp it up that it's gonna impact more than just that perceived crispiness or detail in the photo. Now, speaking of crispiness and detail, I'm gonna go back to, turn that off again, go back to Detail Enhancer and turn these on. Now, there's also sharpness in the uh, Detail Enhancement slider, and you know these are too high. I wouldn't go this high, so I'm gonna pull that back a little bit to a little bit more realistic kind of look, uh, but I am gonna increase the sharpness. Now, the sharpness helps you create kind of a well-defined edge on your photo by crisping up those edges, and essentially is creating contrast between the edges of the object in the photo, so the sharpness is actually, um, I think something that is, would stand apart from the detail enhancement, whereas the detail enhancement's gonna create some of that fine detail and some of that crispiness, the sharpness by focusing those soft edges is gonna give you a little bit different feel in the photo. So in this photo, I actually like the detail enhancement better than I do the structure. So let me show you that one more time. There it is before, and that's no detail uh, and no sharpening, and there it is after with I think a realistic amount of both. Now if I turn that off, and go back to AI structure, turn that on. At 100, I think it's overdone. It has impacted the light, but again, I probably wouldn't go to 100. I'd probably go to maybe 50 here. But look at 50, and let me pull this in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna go out one. I'm gonna go to 25. So there it is, AI structure at 50 and at zero. Definite improvement, but again, you can still see that contrast difference. Whereas over here at Detail Enhancer, I think you're just gonna see a little bit sharper look to those rocks and you're not gonna see an impact on the light or the contrast in the rest of the image. So there you go, before and after. Big difference between the two. Let me show you another example. Okay, on a portrait. Now, one of the cool things about AI structure that you don't get with the details enhancer is it's human aware. It's also content aware, but the human aware element allows you to get some of that pop in some of the background areas without getting it on the subject. So I've zoomed in here a little bit. I wanna show you this on AI structure as I drag this to the right you will see that I'm picking up details in the background. Her hair is getting a little bit lighter, and if I back out, let me say fit to screen, let me show you this whole photo. So let me turn this off. There it is, much darker background without AI structure, and with it, uh, quite a bit more uh, visibility into that. So, But if you look at her skin, as I said, it's human aware. That's not picking up a bunch of uh, crispiness, right? So it's recognizing her skin, and I would say it's working on her hand and her shoulders as well as her face. Um, maybe not, you know, actually there's a little bit coming in on some of her, her skin, but you know, overall I would say it's doing a really good job of sort of uh, not impacting the skin. Now let me go to Detail Enhancer, and if I start dragging these to the right, you're gonna start picking up pores, and it's gonna look like noise, and it's gonna look kind of crispy or grainy, as you can see there, so, um, but the background is not brightening up. So that's something to keep in mind that um, the Detail Enhancer, I think, is, is not gonna be as good on a portrait because I think you're generally not gonna wanna sharpen and crisp up somebody's face, uh, basically. Whereas AI structure um, could help you with, uh, with such a thing because uh, it could help you with the background. In fact, I've got another portrait, I'll show you where it does just that. Okay, here we go, one more portrait. Now this one has a bit more background as I just mentioned. So AI structure here, you start dragging that to the right and I get a really nice kind of crunchy background which I think looks pretty cool on this portrait. But if you look at her, uh, especially if you zoom in on her face, now let me turn this off, there's before, and there's after, we're having very little impact on her face, and she looks kind of mad at me uh, for zooming in that, that close. Um, but if you look at the before and the after, um, I think uh, AI structure, uh, fit to screen, there you go. Um, I think that does a great job on this 
portrait because it's really enhancing that background and that's part of what I like about this photo is you got that sign and you got that fence. So let me turn that off, compare that to details enhancer. So if we wanna pull up the large details and some of those, you know, as I said, kind of global contours in the image, they're gonna bring that up. But if you start bringing up smaller details as well, you can see already that her face is getting crispy and that does not look good on a portrait because that's not really, I think, what it works for. Uh, there you go, before and after, right? So um, if I take the small details down, hopefully that'll reduce a little bit in her face. Medium two, let's try that. Yes, yeah, some, but still, if I turn this off and back on, it's still impacting your face and all I've got is large details. And so I think on portraits, you're probably better off with AI structure. Again, it's human aware. And that is, by the way, if you're wanting to accentuate the details around the portrait subject. Um, in this case, I think it made sense. In the last photo, I don't think that I would probably use AI structure because I like the dark background. Now, the other thing that's similar about the two tools is that if you take them to the left, you can get a very nice, soft, kind of dreamy background. So with AI structure, this is not a good photo example, but you see me all the time in videos dragging it to the left and then painting it into water and sky. And a similar thing works with details enhancer. And sometimes I use them both, especially if I wanna kind of stack that effect without adding a new layer. I'll try AI structure plus details enhancer, take everything to the left, make it negative, paint it into the areas that I want to be super smooth and use it that way. So that's something that they have in common. But otherwise, I think there are distinct differences between what AI structure will do to a photo and what the details enhancer, including the sharpness, will do to a photo. Even though I use the terms interchangeably, I'll say, let's give a little clarity, let's give a little crunch, give a little structure. But structure to me is a little bit more about the perceived detail. And I think of it more in terms of the global overall look of the photo. Whereas details, I think of the smaller things that I wanna really pop and create some sharpness and some kind of crispiness in a specific minute area of the photo. Um, that's how I think of the difference. That's kind of how I use them. Your mileage may vary, to be honest, and I don't, my, to be clear, my definitions are not scientific. This is my experience using the product and kind of how it's working for me and how I think about using it and when and why I think about using it. I'm not claiming these are the end-all, be-all definitions because honestly, structure and detail, everybody uses them a bit interchangeably and it's kind of hard sometimes to differentiate them, but that's why I wanted to show you on a couple of different photos because I think there are some differences and I think if you pay close attention, you'll pick those up in your photos and being aware of those can help you get better images at the end and that's what we're all about. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this gave you uh, something to think about when you're using AI structure and detail enhancer. And like I said, I'm starting to use them both in combination because I think they pair really well Again, depending on what you're trying to do to the image. But that's it for this one, my friends. Hope it's given you some things to think about and use in your own workflow. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon and adios.